no, 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 no. I'm gonna let that chill out. Hi guys, I'm back, unfortunately. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that I have already filmed this once. I filmed it two days ago and I was looking over the footage and I had tried this new angle with a new tripod that I had and I had it leaning against my wall and then I was working on my table right here and I didn't I forgot to move the table back so that it wasn't like hitting the wall and so basically throughout an almost three hour long video the camera was just shaking and it was just so bad that I could not salvage not even like 30 minutes of footage even if I tried so I literally just scrapped it it's very painful um, I, yeah, I am not happy about this, but it is a learning lesson. So I am here refilming again, which is not ideal, but we do what we gotta do. Please don't explode. The first time around that I filmed, I did some repots, obviously told some stories, which I will be retelling today, which is fine because as I was watching the footage, um, I wasn't feeling very well that day and I was just kind of blabbing and blabbing and not really getting to the point of the story fast enough so I think it's going to be better this time around, hopefully. I did do some repots and there's one thing that I'm really sad that I won't be able to show you as I'm doing it but I can kind of show you now. The thing that I really wanted to feature in the first video is this pond mix from the Variegated Plant Shop. They are a small plant shop based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, her name is Ina. She sent me her homemade pond, which is obviously this one. The only thing that I added was the Osmocote Slow Release Fertilizer, which are those little yellow beads, and then also the coarse perlite. But this is my new favorite pond. And honestly, I got this into this vessel like three days ago now, and I'm already seeing some new root growth along the edge here. So, so happy. And I just love looking at this. Um, I posted this on my Instagram today and was just raving about it because it just looks so beautiful. I feel like it makes the plant shelf just look really fun in comparison to just the regular pond. So this is my new favorite pond. I'm hoping to get my hands on some more because I blew through the two bags in the repot. So I repotted this Clarinervium in this pond and I also repotted this Alocasia Michalitziana Maxkowskii in one of her self-watering planters. And I really, really like this one because it's so lightweight. Initially, just uh, in terms of like honest feedback, when I first received it and I was sort of inspecting this vessel, I was like, oh, it feels really light. And, um, you know, it's not like the typical self-watering planters that I'm used to where the plastic's very thick. It's really heavy. But um, after using it, it's actually so much nicer because... Once you have a whole vessel filled with pond, it is so heavy and so having a lighter planter um, has actually been a little bit more ideal for me and it's still really good quality, like I can only squeeze it about this much and it comes with this nice little pot. I believe that the diameter of this is 4 inches or maybe 5, I can't remember. But yeah, this comes in her little kit. She sends you, I believe, two of these self-watering planters. It comes with the pond mix and also fertilizer. So yeah, this is one of the plants that I repotted and it's doing really well. Hasn't seemed to like gone into shock or anything. This leaf was already dying off a little bit when I was repotting it. So yeah, I would say it's been so far a successful repot. I just wanted to make sure to go back and highlight those things because yeah, I just, I really actually love the pond so much and I was excited to show it and I will throw in a little clip here of me mixing it because it was so beautiful and it was just, it's just so pretty and now I just don't want to go back to my old pond. So anyway, I'm back, as painful as it is to redo this whole thing. The silver lining is that there is always so much to repot, so it's kind of like forcing me to get some things done. Today's video is just going to be a story time and repot. 
Surprisingly, this has been my number one requested video, honestly, of all time. Um, I think the first time I ever did a story time was when I was accused of being a scammer, and I will throw in the thumbnail here. Oh, there's no space. I'm going to scoot over. The building is slanted this way, so it's kind of hard to go this way. <laughs> one more. Okay, so yeah, this is the video where I talked about how I was accused of being a scammer. Fun times. And then the second one was when I just did like a regular repot and story time. That one was kind of impromptu. It was supposed to just be like a repot and chat, but it turned into more of a story time. So I branded it as that. And I honestly didn't really know what the response was going to be because like I don't have a ton of followers. I'm not like a lifestyle influencer like most if not all of you guys are here for plants so I'm like I don't really know if people care about stories that have to do with my life but the video performed so well and whenever I put out polls um, like on Instagram of what people want to see they always want story time so that was really surprising because I honestly didn't think I was that good of a storyteller but yeah I'm glad you guys enjoyed it so uh, that one went up, and then the third one that I did was my worst performing video, and that was the spooky story time repot during Halloween. And I don't really care if it doesn't perform well, I am definitely doing another spooky time repot this Halloween because I'm a Halloween girl, and you know I have to do something special for the month of October. So that is that. And I'm going to roll back. Anywho, yeah, so today I'm going to be telling you, I think I have like three or four stories to tell you. I'm sort of on the fence about the fourth story that I want to tell you. I'm not quite sure. I'm just not sure. So I don't know. We'll see where this goes. Uh, just to give you guys a disclaimer, this is going to be part one of a two-part video. So part two is going to go up tomorrow. The only difference is that tomorrow I was drinking a little, so it's more of a tipsy repot. Whereas today we are sober and I'm just having a little bit of kombucha because yeah, I haven't been feeling well the last few days, so I'm just trying to like cleanse my gut. Uh, yeah, we're going to be working on the table today. I have a few plants that I want to address, so let's just get started. It is so hot. I'm like burning up. If you guys are wondering why this shirt is so large and why I'm basically like naked, it's because it's just, it's so hot. Like if I could just be in a sports bra right now, I would, but I think that's just too much chestuses for a maybe hour and a half long story time video. So I like this shirt because I can like catch some wind in my armpits. Oh man, cannot believe we're here again. <sighs> a painful, painful mistake, you know? It's fine, it's fine. We can do all things through the power of kombucha. I really tried being that girl that was like, I'm gonna make my own kombucha. That lasted all two seconds. I'm gonna start real, real small. I gotta work my way into this, but this plant is so thirsty and I'm actually quite upset with it. This is a Hoya New Guinea ghost or something like that. I got this during Christmas from Jing. I got it at the same time as Alice. We both got it as a one leaf cutting, except now hers has maybe like 30,000 leaves and I'm still down to my one. So I think I'm going to get it out of here and just see what the heck is going on. I can't really see like anything because of all the algae. I do see a little root here though. So I know that it's rooted, but um, I think it just, I think it just wants some new pants to have some motivation to do something. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to add some myco to the roots. Hopefully that wakes this little guy up and I will let him be on his way. You guys might notice that I have a new plant shelf back here. I got rid of the um, big, um, big Ikea one, the black one. And that is because it was just taking up too much space. And I think I was like, just so attached to the idea of it. Can you, there's like a piece of my hair on here that's gonna come off. I think I was just like really attached to the idea of making it work, but not being realistic about 
the size of it so this works much better for me we cleaned out my mother-in-law's townhouse she had this extra shelf laying around and it honestly fit like a glove in there so i was like it's meant to be so yeah it's just much nicer now because i can just reach for everything super easily and not worry about having to like open and close the doors and i would get super super ocd about like fingerprints on the glass and obviously when i'm working on plants my hands are always dirty so yeah um okay we definitely have a root system this plant is extremely thirsty it is so wrinkly but yeah i'm just gonna get this into something a little bit nicer than a plastic cup so let's just start with story number one i gotta grab my palm first this story would take place maybe sometime around 2011 or 2012. I can't quite remember the year, but it was when I had moved out of San Francisco and I was living in a city called Sunnyvale and I was still working in San Francisco. So I would take, it would, we call it the Caltrain. Uh, I would take the Caltrain from Sunnyvale to San Francisco to get to work. Keep in mind with this specific train, it wasn't like your normal bus where like a new one would come like every five minutes or something and you could just catch it if you miss it. It's like very, very specific times that it came and like there was limited seating. So if you didn't get a ticket or if you missed it, like you'd have to wait. I think it was like an hour for the next one if it wasn't full. So I was always so like, because I have anxiety, right? Like I'm always like hyper analyzing or hyper focusing on the small details and everything that could go wrong. I have to know exactly what time I'm leaving, like so that I can get there on time and get a seat and just like so many things. At this time, I was working at, I believe I was working at All Saints in San Francisco as a visual merchandiser and um, you know, when you're a VM, like oftentimes you don't take a lunch. I wouldn't say maybe oftentimes, but definitely on days where like, let's say you have a store visit from like your regional manager or something. Um, yeah, like the pressure is really on. So oftentimes you just won't take a lunch or you'll be working and eating at the same time. And this was one of those days where we had a visit from corporate and I just needed to make sure the store was looking snatched. And so yeah, I didn't take a lunch, but I was starving. So by the time I get off work, I'm like, okay, I think that I have enough time to go to my favorite Mexican restaurant to get my favorite carne asada tacos because they had the best pico de gallo they had the best salsa verde and i just was craving it and i'm like you know what i earned this i had a long day at work today and i killed it at work i deserve these tacos but the anxiety in me was like okay but you're cutting it really close you're probably going to be the last one to board the train but if you can leave exactly at this time and get to this stoplight exactly at this time and cross the street at this time like i was going through it and i was like i can make it i can do it so I get off work and I'm just like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. I get there, I order, there were way more people there than I had anticipated, but you know, I had gone too far. I was already there, so I was running a little bit late. I get my tacos and I'm literally walking and eating. The reason that I didn't want to eat on the train was because I'm very sensitive to smells and I have a sensitive gag reflex. And oftentimes, um, you know, it's not their fault. Like this is a normal thing. People would, my nose is so itchy. People would eat their food on the train because it's a commuter train. You know, a lot of people will have breakfast on the train or have dinner on the train, but it doesn't matter what food it is. Even if I like it, even if it smells good, I just don't like smells trapped inside of an enclosed space. It makes me very sick. So I didn't want to be the person that made the entire train smell like carne asada. So I'm like, no, I'm going to eat and walk. I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to make it. It's going to be fine. I need to get some water in this thing because it's very thirsty, but this one is done. The next one that I'm going to do is this wonky weirdo Epipremnum Panatum Aloe Variegata that I got from Erin. If you guys watched my last week of plant to do's part one, you would have seen 
where I hauled this from. So give that a watch if you're curious. But man, I'm gonna show you guys these stems. Once I get it out, I'll show you, it's wild. So, um, you know, I'm walking and eating. I don't know if you guys can imagine these are not Taco Bell tacos where it's a hard shell and it's wrapped in paper. Like it's a real Mexican restaurant. They put it on a plate, it's the soft, tortilla taco there's juices spilling everywhere it was messy i have my big bag i have my purse i have my lunch bag and i'm carrying these tacos and i'm like going through downtown san francisco like hustling in between people trying to catch this dang train while eating two of my ta tacos please tell me these are springtails I really hope this isn't fungus gnat larva, larvae. Ew, no, I don't like that at all. Okay, I'm just gonna spend some time untangling these roots. And honestly, I think I'm gonna soak this in a little bit of alcohol. As much as I hate that method, it actually works. But anyway, um, I do get to the train station. I have taco juice dripping all down my arm. And I'm a mess, like she was, I was messy. I was just frantic and I was trying to scarf these tacos down before I got on the train. I do make it and as expected, I'm the last one on the train and I managed to get a seat, which is actually quite surprising. So uh, the girl, she, you know, she didn't want to sit next to the window. So she let me in, I sat next to the window and then she slid back into the seat. I'm just like trying to like shuffle through my purse to find my like hand wipes, like my wet wipes because again I have taco juice like all down my arm and I'm sticky and if there's one thing that I hate, it's being sticky. I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling and all of a sudden I just hear the slightest sound and it's like just, just a quick, just a quick one. And I kind of look around, I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, I thought it was the girl next to me. And I just carry on, I'm looking for my, looking for my uh, wet wipes. And then my eyes start watering, like, like profusely watering. And I don't even register what's happening. Like my eyeballs had registered the situation before I did. I have tears running down my face. The next thing I remember, my ears were like buzzing. Like they were like on fire and then it hit me. I start coughing and coughing and I'm retching and I realized that that sound was my pepper spray that had been triggered and I always have my lock on. I always have it on and I have like never used that pepper spray before so there's no reason that it should have been unlocked and uh, pepper spray is legal there, so it's not like I was carrying an illegal weapon or anything, but you know, you're supposed to have it locked. So, and I did, I always have it locked, but I, I guess maybe in the shuffling of me frantically trying to like dig through my purse to find my wipes, I maybe unlocked it. And so as soon as I realized what, what happened, I like closed my purse hoping to like trap in whatever was in there but by then it was too late. The girl next to me was hacking, the person behind me was retching, and then the whole train, it was just a whole train, like the whole train was coughing their lungs out and then someone yells, a leak! And I was like, oh no, a leak, hurry, we gotta get out of here. And I'm just like mortified, but I feel so terrible. But I panicked. I was like, I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble. Like, it was an accident. Like, are they going to call the cops? You know, like I accidentally pepper sprayed an entire train. Luckily, there were no kids on the train. But basically, all the workers were like, everyone get off. Everyone get off. They wanted us to like back away from the train just in case it like blew up or something. And yeah, everyone evacuated. We all had to catch a different train. Everyone was late. It was a whole thing. And obviously people were pissed off, but at the same time, there were some people that were like, oh, thank goodness we, you know, we got off in time. Like what if something like exploded on the way there and wow, we're so lucky. And I'm like, yeah, we're super lucky. I ended up staying 
in San Francisco a little bit longer. I had to call my boyfriend at the time and I was just like, I just pepper sprayed an entire train. And he was like, what? I was like, no, you heard me right. I pepper sprayed the entire train. We're stuck here because my pepper spray went off and I poisoned everyone, including myself. If it's any consolation, I had it the worst. Like that stuff went directly into my esophagus. It was bad. So um, ever since then, I stopped carrying pepper spray. But you know, I was a little paranoid because I have been um, robbed at knife point before. Not a fun experience. That's not my only time dealing with uh, scary men. So I did feel a peace of mind, you know, carrying that pepper spray, but I was like, you know what? We can't, we can't let this happen again. So that was that. Here's what's going on. I have a little coffee cup full of Albo Epi. I just have this in a 50-50 mix of rubbing alcohol and water. To be fully honest, this mixture always freaks me the heck out because this stuff is so strong and I'm like, I don't want to give my plants this, but this has helped me so much with root mealies. I actually never had root mealies until I had Hoyas. I never even knew what root mealies were. I had not seen one in my life. No one was ever talking about it. And I was like, why do I have these little white disgusting things in my vessel? And yeah, that's when it came about. And I started doing some research and literally everyone said rubbing alcohol. And I was like, rubbing alcohol, <laughs> oh no. Um, but you know, it's helped so much. So I don't have root mealies, but I do have, I think what is fungus gnat larvae in this, um, which surprises me because Aaron didn't really have fungus gnats and I'm hoping that I didn't just kill a bunch of springtails because we like springtails but I'm just like erring on the side of caution so I'm going to be soaking this pretty much for the majority of this video and then we will get to this at the end. I'm going to be chopping it up. I'm not going to be making like a full pot or anything. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to split it up. I really just wanted this plant to isolate some of this really cool variegation just to see what happens. So not a ton to do on this, just a lot of chopping and propagating, but obviously I want it to be clear of anything that might be in here that could transfer to other plants. So the next plant I'm going to be working on is my, well, there are two. So these are my philodendron pink princess propagations and look at this leaf that surprised me. I really haven't had a ton of great variegation on the pink princess that I have, but I actually don't mind it. I do think that pink princesses are really pretty once it gets like that beautiful pink sectoral variegation or even when it's just splashy. But in general, the leaves are just so dark. They're like this bluish blackish green color and it's just, yeah, it's incredible. So even without like a ton of variegation, I still enjoy the plants a lot. Uh, but it was growing very tall, so I chopped the bottom off. I chopped it into like a million pieces, and I still have a few more chunks in my prop bin, but for whatever reason, these two woke up the fastest, and I was just really, really surprised to see this guy. I think that's been one of like the best parts about having a philodendron pink princess is just not really knowing if you're going to get variegation, so it's like a surprise, and honestly, when you get the green leaves, it's just part of the suspense, so I don't, I don't know, I, I really enjoy this plant. But anyway, um, yeah, continuing on with my story, that is when I pepper sprayed an entire train. I am so, so, so sorry to anyone who was on that train. It was a very terrible thing I did, but it was a mistake. It was an accident. I just always felt safer when I had my pepper spray on me, and I was always really good about keeping that safety on, but... For whatever reason, the universe said, today, today, I'm going to make your day. You're going to have a day you're not going to forget. So yeah, that was my opening story. I once pepper sprayed an entire train. They called the police and everything just to make sure there were no bombs or anything suspicious. It's a whole thing. But it was very mortifying. 
I had thought about fessing up to it and just being like, nobody panic, just let it air out. It's just pepper spray so that it wouldn't get delayed and everyone could continue on with their lives. But everyone was pissed. I didn't want to be like the one person that, you know, they're like, oh, so she's the reason or like, what an idiot. Oh, this is one stem, two growth points. I always thought I had two separate chunks in here. Interesting. The next story would have happened probably a few years later. I think this was maybe 2015 or 2016. I was at Old Navy with my mom and I believe we were Christmas shopping. And you know, my, my mom and I always have like a really good time, we always, are laughing and joking and stuff and so we're like completely distracted in conversation and we're walking out of the store just la 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 and then all of a sudden we notice that like there are lights being shined into the parking lot from a helicopter and I was like ooh what are these lights and we're looking up and it's a helicopter and we're like ooh helicopter what's going on and we're still walking to the car and then I'm like, oh, it's Sacramento PD. And she's like, huh, that's interesting. I wonder what they're doing. With no regard to the fact that like when you see a police helicopter shining a light down on you, you should probably figure that there's a little bit of danger around, right? Nope, we just saw a pretty light. We were like, head in the clouds, so oblivious. And so we're still walking to the car, just kind of wondering what might be going on. And then it wasn't until we got into the car and sat in the car that we noticed that the lights were like shining on our car and the surrounding cars. And we're like, hmm. At the time we were driving my mom's old Lexus and it was a used Lexus. <laughs> you know, my family and I are well versed in the used car game up until Actually, I don't think anyone in my family had ever purchased a car brand new. Sorry, it's the time that the ghosts come out, 9.30. I'm just gonna be spraying this with some safers. Not that there's any pests, but sometimes I like to just preemptively treat, especially on these smaller plants, just a lot easier to do rather than the big ones. Anyway, so we're in my mom's used Lexus and you know, her car has some quirks amongst other things. One of those quirks is that the auto lock, it'll lock all of the doors except for the door behind the driver's seat. Sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes, but most of the times it didn't. Um, same with the windows. I think it was like the passenger window. If you rolled it down, it wouldn't always roll back up. So it's just like, don't touch it. And so we're sitting in the car, hadn't locked the doors because duh, we're like, hey, what's going on? The lights are shining on us and we're like trying to look out the window like, what the heck is going on? And we're like looking around trying to find some action. Oh, we found the action. The action was leaning on our hood. Imagine this, you're sitting in a dark parking lot, right? It was nighttime. And you see this man who looks completely just I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. All I remember are these huge eyes glaring at me and he's leaning on the hood like this, staring into my soul. I was stunned. And then my mom goes, I wonder if this is who they're looking for. And then all of a sudden he starts crawling along the hood, like trying to not be noticed. And then I see that he walks past my door and he starts reaching for the door behind me, the one that doesn't lock. And I saw this playing all out in my head, but my instinct was to cover my ears. I went like this and covered my ears, thinking that it was going to solve anything. Thank goodness my mom was with me. God bless my mom. She hits the lock, but again, doesn't always lock. But on this day, the universe said, fine, I'll lock the door, but just this one time. So as he pulls the handle, my mom locks the door, he bangs on it, walks behind the car, tries to open the other door behind her, goes to her door, like goes right up against the window and it's like, open the door. And I'm just the whole time, my, my hands are on my ears and I'm like, mom, 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 what do you do? 
And she's like, calm down, calm down. And then suddenly he goes missing and we're like, where did he go? And I swear I thought he was gonna like pop up like from a movie and just like, you know, crack the window open or something so that he could get in. But uh, the next thing we knew, the police had come, they tackled him to the ground, they arrested him. I guess he was involved in like a high speed chase and he had ended up in that parking lot. Like he got out of the car, was on foot, and that's when they were shining the lights into the parking lot because he was hiding in between the cars. All I can imagine is like what would have happened if my mom wasn't there like he would have gotten into the car i bet you he would have been like drive and i would have been in like one of those movies you know i just watched a movie recently where it was like that paramedic is that the movie paramedic so good yeah where they basically like take you hostage and make you like do all these things so that they can get away from the cops that 100 percent would have been me and you know i talk a lot of i talk a lot of because I watch so many scary movies and you know um, in the scenes where like the girl's running away from the guy and then she freaking trips like they always trip and then they do this thing where like they look back and then they like turn around and they're just like walking backwards like just get up just get the hell up and just keep running like they do the thing where it's so dramatic I would be that girl in fact, I probably wouldn't have even ran. I probably just would have frozen in time and that would have been the end of my story. Um, yeah, I could never be the main character. She could never be me. And the whole ride home, my mom, my sweet mom, she was trying so hard not to roast me. She was like, covering your ears, really? What's that gonna do, covering your ears? You always lock your doors when you get in the car. And you know, I learned that lesson the hard way because trust me, I know now. The first thing I do when I get into my car when I'm alone is I lock the dang doors. I don't care if I'm at Walmart. I don't care if I'm in the parkade downstairs. I'm locking those doors because now, now, I'm always on perv alert. You know, on the way home, I was like, can I buy you something? Can I buy you a coffee, a drink, dinner? Can I just get you something? Because you quite literally just saved my entire life. Like this night could have gone so much differently if you hadn't locked those doors. I'm not going to separate this because I quite like it as a little bush. I think eventually I'm gonna have to get it on a pole. That time is not now because it's quite little. Not that you can't start juvenile plants on a pole right away, you actually should. They'll size up a lot faster. But I don't know, I just find the process of like having like a big old pole on a tiny plant to just be a little bit inconvenient, especially with the Space constrictions that I have right now it's just not gonna happen these are very mossy roots and I don't think I want to grow it in soil I kind of want to grow it in pond but I'm not feeling that great about moving these mossy roots to pond so I think I'm gonna try soil I still have two other two or three other pink princess props that I can test out in passive hydro so I'm just gonna play it safe this time and do soil. By the way, if you can't tell already, the uh, sort of theme of this story time are just kind of like strange things that have happened to me. I'm trying to think of other scenarios that I would have been in where like I had to protect myself and then I didn't. I mean, I can think of all the times that I did protect myself, but that's a little bit too heavy for this kind of story time or ever, so. I'm not even going to get into that, but more of like a haha -ha funny, you know. I don't know if this counts, but whenever a flying object comes at me, I never, I don't have the reflexes to protect my face or my body. It just comes like hurling towards me. So in general, the self-defense game is like 1 out of 10. Solid 1 out of 10. Like if I had to go on one of those shows like, what is that? Like the gauntlet? Is that what I'm thinking of? I don't watch that stuff. Or they have to do like challenges. Oh, is it called the challenge? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really watch those kinds of reality shows. I don't know why it's not really my thing. But basically I would just do terrible. And hopefully none of you ever get stuck in a scary movie with me, like real life scary movie, because unfortunately I would be useless. I did crack the code in a escape room though, once. It was my only contribution, but it was a vital contribution. 
All right. Pink Princess is in. I am so glad it's out of that ugly... What was it in before? Was it in a cup? Oh. Oh, it was in this thing. These are ugly, but I like that I can hang them on my grid walls and they're really light. And because it's got this really thick lip up here, it like prevents it from cracking all the way to the top. So it's a really great plastic cup for my props. And thinking about it now, I threw away the other one. Why did I do that? I'm trying to stay like as neat as possible here because after these repot days when I'm filming, it is like, it's, it's really like, 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 I don't know, like an avalanche went through my plant room and then I regret not just kind of tidying up as I go. So I'm going to try and be better about just, you know, not being so frantic, going slow. I feel like with like my ADHD or whatever, like I tend to do everything very, very frantically, especially when I eat. I am such a fast eater, which is why I, like I always feel sick after I eat because I just eat so fast. I can just like never do something calmly. All right, you guys, here, here is an interesting one for you. So this is my Hoya Apache Clada. I used to have two big leaves here and maybe like two days after they fully hardened off, they just fell off. I don't know why, um, but now it's decided to activate in the vessel. Of all places, look how long this stem is. I gave it a moss pull. Gave it everything, but it's like, no, uh, we we want to grow down here. So I got to help this stupid guy out because he's just, he's just irritating me. I've been wanting to get this out of here anyway because it's just kind of a stupid setup. And this is one of my last remaining plants, if not my last plant in purely LECA. Oh my gosh. It looks like... It looks like a little caterpillar. Wait, arms all twisted. Lots of root breakage here, but lots of new roots. I'm just trying to be careful because of how, ugh, see, with Leka, the one thing I don't like is that the roots like grow almost into the porous clay and then it just rips it right off. Especially with like really, really fine roots. It's hard to take it off without breaking it. Even if it's wet, I find that it's like no different. It just tears right off. I'm almost tempted to chop this so that the, I can put it down back into the pot to create like a fuller plant. Oh, my back hurts because I've been freaking doing these dang repots all week. If I don't get it right this time, no, we're done. So the first time that I filmed this story time. I told a story about sort of a nightmare date that I went on. It was a first date with this guy, but now that I'm thinking about it, like I put out this whole disclaimer, like if he had for whatever reason saw this video that there's like no hard feelings, but like if you really think about what happened between us, it was like kind of weird, you know? But now I just feel like I shouldn't tell the story at all just cause I don't know. I don't want it to be embarrassing for him. Like, he's a really, really good guy. It was just a very, very odd situation. And it's such a great story to tell, but I just don't think that saying it so publicly on a YouTube channel where there is a chance he might come across it. I mean, I doubt he will, but maybe someone he knows or mutual friends or something. I just don't think it's a good idea. I don't want to be like that person, you know? So, oh no, I hate moss poles, you see? This was a lazy pole, I could just pull it right off. I think I'm just gonna rip it off, because I can't be bothered. Wow, it's really rooted in there. Okay, so, that broke. I broke it. It was an accident. But it's fine because I wanted to, pro I was literally gonna chop it anyway because this is just looking ridiculous. I very, I much prefer it as a little bush like this rather than that. So I'm just gonna let this callus up because I broke it. We'll do that at the end. 
I'm sweating, it's so hot. Next on the roster is my Ethereum Bessier F that I got from Erin. So I'm going to omit that story, so I'm probably only going to have like another story to tell you, but um, you'll have more stories in part two. I just feel like it's, uh, it would just be too mean to publicly tell the story. I hope you can understand. But for this third story, I've actually, I think I've told both of these stories briefly in an Instagram caption, but both of these stories happened at the airport and they're just kind of like nightmare stories. Making a humongous mess. These roots are delicious though. I'm gonna start with the first story first because I need to like work my way up into telling the second one because when I posted this on Instagram, I was like, did I really just admit to this right now publicly? Honestly, it's kind of liberating just not feeling like you have to hold back on what you tell people <laughs> online because, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people feel the pressure of putting on this sort of like persona on the internet that they're like cool and like they're that, like, you know, the main character or whatever. It's so much easier not being the main character and just being okay with it. Like we're all human, we all do like weird behind closed doors we all have like embarrassing moments with ourselves where it's like oh thank god nobody was around for that you know so anyway um yeah let's start with the first story so both taken place at actually at the sacramento airport if you didn't know my husband and i did long distance for what felt like forever uh 13 14 15 16 we did long distance for almost five years California to British Columbia. So we were traveling like every other month or every two months to see each other back and forth. We would take turns. Sort of in the beginning of our relationship, Vince, he bought me a GoPro and poor thing, I like never used that thing once, but he bought a GoPro because he's like, oh, we can like document our adventures together. And he got me like the whole set. There was like, a hand grip, there was a tripod, there was like a cage for it. Like there was, it was like the works. Like he really went all out with this. I, I don't know if he thought we were going like skydiving or what, I don't know what the plan was, but he got the whole thing. And so I would often travel with it just in case like we needed to use it, even though like we never did anything when we hung out. We literally just like stayed in bed and watched Netflix all day, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I had packed the GoPro and all of the accessories one trip and I get to the airport and you know when they scan your luggage and they like find something that like raises a flag, it goes into like the other conveyor belt to where like the officer is. So sure enough, mine gets flagged, but, but this time around, it wasn't just like it got flagged and they were like, you need to come here, like we're gonna open your luggage. It was like, it went through the conveyor belt and then it went back and then it went through the conveyor, the x-ray again. But this time he had called like other security officers to come by to like look at the screen. And they were all like pointing at something, like looking confused, like looking, I don't know, like concerned. And I was like, what the hell did I put in there? So finally, yeah, it goes to the other conveyor belt where they, where they move it into secondary, but they didn't touch it right away. They just left it. And then I see one, um, security guard or why am I saying security guard they're an officer um, I see one officer like radioing someone and uh, they had asked me like is that your luggage and I was like yeah that's mine and uh, they told me to go stand where the secondary door was which is weird it wasn't like they were just gonna like have me open my purse like they wanted me to stand where they actually pull you in if they find something they're like you need to go stand over there like away from the luggage and I was like what the heck? So all of these other officers come by, but one officer in particular was like in full gear. Like he had like a mask, like he had everything on. He had like this whole suit. He had a dog with him. And I was like, okay, I know I have tampons in there. Uh, yeah, I've got my GoPro, I've got my toiletries. Like what the heck? why, why, why is this happening to me? Not only that, they stop all the lines. As soon as the guard gets there to do his inspection, they they stop all of the lines. Um, nobody was getting cleared anymore and they had asked everyone to back away. Like they moved everyone back. And I was like, 
Okay, well, I'm the only one here by the secondary place, so they obviously know it's mine or it's me that's like causing this delay. And you know, people like at the airport, like everyone's important, everyone's got somewhere to be, everyone's late, so you know, people weren't happy. But the uh, the officer comes, comes with the dog, and goes up to my luggage, and the dog sniffs, 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 doesn't alert to anything. So I was like, okay, well, that's. <laughs> Well, that's good, but I don't know what he's trained for. Drugs, weapons, you know? Um, and so the dog goes back and then the guy that was fully suited, he starts opening the luggage and listen, the way I pack my luggage is so that everything is very like space efficient. I do the method where I roll everything, including my underwears. So I usually do all the bulky stuff on the bottom of the luggage, then I do the clothes rolled up, and then I do my underwears. The underwears are on top because it's the smallest one. I kind of just fit them in between everywhere. So my fruit roll up underwears are flying everywhere. And you guys, by this time, Vince and I, you know, we weren't in like the honeymoon phase. I wasn't trying to like woo him and impress him with like sexy underwear. I was bringing my comfy underwear, okay? I think I remember I was on my period, so I brought my period underwear, and if you you know what I mean, period underwear. It's the underwears you wear that are already stained so that you don't get your nice underwear stained, and you just wear these underwear every time you're on your period. So I brought my period underwear, and they were flying and flying, and then all of my stuff is being just totally exposed by everyone, everyone's staring and waiting. And then comes the thing that was so freaking scary and they pull it out and it was the, f it was the GoPro grip. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. I hopefully I can find a photo of what it looked like cause it's like an older model, but I throw it up here. It looks like a BOMB, right? I had never even thought about that. I had never even, just the thought never crossed my mind. And this wasn't the first time that I crossed with this GoPro grip. I had flown before with it and it did not raise any issues at all. But for some reason this time around, they were like, this girl's got a BOMB. And yeah, that's what all the hoopla was about. And so then the officer raises it. He's like, all clear, it's just a GoPro grip. Holds it up in the air, looks like a BOMB. And I was like, really you guys? Like you have never seen one of these before? Are you joking me right now? I really thought I was gonna get arrested that day, you guys. And you know what, the, they don't even like, there was like no like, oh, sorry ma'am. You know, we just have to be careful. They're just like, pack up your stuff. And like all my underwear is everywhere. So mortifying. But it's always something at TSA, you know? I think like, I almost look too innocent. Like, like I'd be the perfect mule so to say. 50% of the time that I go through TSA, I always get like either my luggage flagged or like they do like the random sort of like body inspection on me or something. Like I always get pulled into that sort of secondary inspection. I must have like an aura about myself. I don't know. These are mossy roots and I'm gonna move it to pond. So I'm just trying to remove as much as I can. But honestly, I haven't really had a lot of issues with moving super mossy plants to La Chusa Pond. It just, you know, it doesn't look great. Obviously, once the moss starts falling off and falling into the vessel, it's not ideal, but it's also not the end of the world. So I'm just gonna not um, be super nitpicky about it and just carry on with my life. So I think I have the perfect vessel for this, although I kind of wanted to keep it for my Majestic. This is a great root system, not gonna do any chopping. The stem is very choppable. Um, I'm just not 100% convinced that this is an Ethereum that my mom or my sister are really like after. So honestly, the only reason I would be chopping plants right now is if it's like a space thing or if I know that my family would want it. And I just don't think that they would. And my mom has also voiced to me that she appreciates philodendrons more than anthurium, so I definitely kept that in mind. But you know, she has like an anthurium crystallinum, and I think she has a clarinervium, but 
that might be it. She might have a Vitarifolium as well, but she's not super into Anthuriums. Fingers crossed for a successful transplant of this um, Bessie. Um, okay, so the next story is also related to the airport. This one is slightly more embarrassing, but it's also very TMI. And again, I did tell this story on my Instagram and people could not believe that I actually shared it publicly, but you know what? I don't really have a lot of rules lately. Okay, so I am at TSA yet again, the same TSA where I was almost arrested. And I was about to walk up and then I felt my period start, okay? I don't know if uh, people who don't get their period know, but we have no control over the flow. It just comes when it comes. A lot of people are on a cycle so that they can kind of predict when it's coming. They'll already wear a pad or like a panty liner or something just in case. But my period at that time, my cycles were not regular. So I just really never knew when it was coming. And let me tell you, I did not know this period was arriving when it did. And so I'm in TSA, I'm walking up and then I feel... I feel the gush. You know what I'm talking about, the gush. So I'm like, hold on one second, I have to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, please, please, please say that I have a tampon, say that I have anything, nothing. I had a Band-Aid, what is a Band-Aid gonna do for me? So I'm like, okay, usually they have like the dispensers where they use, they sell like pads and tampons. Granted, the tampons that they sell in those little things are like cardboard. And I don't know how anyone inserts the cardboard applicators into their Beginda, but I have never been able to successfully get one of those up there. I'm like, you know what? Uh, that's, no, we're not gonna go that route because I'm not gonna sit on this three hour flight with a piece of cardboard stuck in my beginda. Not that it really mattered because they didn't even have any available. Keep in mind you guys, I was already late for this flight. Um, by the time I got to TSA, it was about to be boarding time. So I was, I was freaking out a little bit because I don't like to be late to things. I'm one of those people that have to be freakishly early to movies because one of my greatest fears is walking into a movie theater because you know like it's the hallway and then you get to the end of the hallway and then you look up and it's all the seats and if you're late like everyone just stares at you walking to your seat and it's like so awkward especially if it's one of those theaters where it's not like pre-booked seating and you have to find a seat if you can find one. And it is, it, to me, that is one of the most embarrassing, mortifying situations to be in, even though it's such a regular, such a regular thing. There's nothing embarrassing about it. But to me, in my anxious mind, in my socially anxious mind, I just don't want that many people staring at me. So I find it to be very embarrassing. By the way, I am repotting finally this Philodendron Majestic that I got from Jing and, uh... Yeah, I gotta get this one on a lazy pole as much as I really didn't want to build out a lazy pole today. I think that's the direction we're going. So yeah, I am already late for this flight. I'm freaking out because everyone is about to board and I'm not even through security yet. And I was like, I'm gonna miss this flight. I'm just, this is the worst day of my life. And so I'm in the bathroom and I'm like, I don't have time to like go to the store to see if they, sell tampons and uh, I'm like I'm just gonna sh I'm just gonna shove a bunch of toilet paper down there and sure enough my stall doesn't have toilet paper and I poke my head out and there's a long line of people in the bathroom waiting for a stall so I'm like I'm not just gonna like cut in front of someone and be like I need tissue paper like it, it's just embarrassing I, I just if I can avoid human contact at all cost I will so 
I didn't have toilet paper, but there's something that there was a lot of, and um, it was toilet seat covers. Uh, that's not a thing here in Canada, fun fact. If you're in the States, I don't know if toilet seat covers are a thing like overseas too, but it's a very normal thing in, in America, and I find it to be one of the greatest things about America <laughs> is toilet seat covers in public restrooms. It's not a thing here in Canada. I, I think people either just sit on the toilet bare ass or they put toilet paper, which I don't know, is it takes a long time and sometimes it falls in the toilet. You gotta be very coordinated. So um, yeah, there were a lot of toilet seat covers, thank goodness. In my head, I'm like, thank goodness. Guys, when I tell you I'm just pulling, I'm pulling and I'm shoving, just shoving it down there wasn't lying. I probably had seven toilet seat covers stashed in my underwear and I'm like gotta go gotta go pull up my pants I drag in my luggage I go through security the adrenaline's running and it's not until I sort of slow down and you know I'm at a stop at TSA and then I walk forward and I just hear My underwear was crunching because toilet seat covers are not like tissue paper. It's like, you know, um, what is that? Like, like wrapping tissue. You know, when you have a gift bag and you stuff the tissue in there to make it look all pretty. It's like the same exact material, and it makes a crunchy sound. And I didn't think about that at the time. I was like, well, you know what? It's probably gonna absorb something. It'll something. It, I mean, it's better than nothing. But I was crunching so loud. When I tell you, I was crunching. It was loud. It was so loud to the point that like the person behind me was actually like looking around seeing what that sound was. So the only way that I could get it to not crunch is if I walked with my legs apart like that. And I'm not going to walk with my legs apart like that going through TSA. Do you know how suspect that looks? Like I was not going to, no, no. So I'm like, you know, screw it, whatever. I'm crunching. I get through the thing where you walk through the scanner and they're like, you know, walk up, put your hands up, and I'm just like, crunch, 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 crunch. The girl looks at me like, okay. And uh, I literally sounded like I had a windbreaker in my underwear. Sounded exactly like that, like a raincoat in my underwear. She didn't say anything. It was very loud. Uh, and, and then I get through, everything's fine. I am running from TSA to the gate. Crunch, 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 crunch. Thought the horror was over till I realized everyone had boarded and uh, I didn't miss the flight. They let me and they opened the doors again. They're like, we got one lot. We got the last person that was missing. <sighs> my seat was, I think it was like 23D. All the, no, my camera's gonna die. My makeup is like slowly melting off because it is so hot in this room. Why has this been happening to me every video? Some of you guys might hate this, but I'm leaving the lights off because it's so much cooler in here without the lights on. It like literally just dropped by 10 degrees. So anyway, I was in the middle of telling this story. So like I said, I was the last one to board this flight and I was all the way back in like 23D. It was one of those big Alaska airline planes and yeah, I was all the way in the back and everyone was seated. It was like pitch quiet. All you hear going down the aisle is my underwear just just crunching along. It's like you might as well have put a Ziploc full of cereal in my underwear and then told me to go walk down my wedding aisle. Like it's it was loud, it was bad. And it was embarrassing. So not only did like my worst fear come alive of just people staring at me, but I'm like sweaty. I have all my stuff with me. I'm rolling my luggage. I still had to put my luggage in the overhead. It was a whole thing. Thank goodness there was a man next to me who like offered to put my luggage like on the overhead uh, compartment for me because being as small as I am, it actually is quite difficult to get luggages up there. Um, but yeah, the whole plane heard my underwear crunching and it's not like it was very like, um, 
obscure where the sound would come from because I was wearing like sweatpants and like a cotton t-shirt. It's not like I was wearing like a windbreaker jacket or something like where it could be like, oh, it's probably the sound of her windbreaker. No. Like why is this girl wearing all cotton crunching? So that was a... Uh, that was really great. I really, really enjoyed that. I don't really like the lighting directly on my face. I feel like it's like a spotlight, but it's so much cooler. I'm like glistening because it's so hot. Now that I feel like summer is approaching in Canada finally, I'm like, do I want it to be summer? It's going to be a sauna in here, man. Why do I always spill everywhere? Honestly, it's like I have no depth perception. You know, at my best friend's wedding recently, I freaking walked into a glass window in front of people. Luckily, I don't embarrass easily these days, but like, imagine if that was like in front of like way more people. It was just in front of like my close friends, thank goodness. But I straight up just like bonked my face into a freaking glass window that was so freakishly clean. I can really appreciate how clean that window was. But yeah, my depth perception lately has just been totally off. Whoa, the whole, th whoa. Luckily I don't have to fly very often anymore. Like my husband and I always drive to California because of Pudge. He's just a rambunctious boy and thinking about flying with him honestly just sounds like an absolute nightmare. Uh, so these days we just drive even though the drive can be very very agonizing at times. It's just what we have to do. I don't know. I don't like traveling. I don't like going through airports. TSA makes me so nervous. I think maybe my experiences through TSA have not helped my situation. People have been trying to get me to use one of those like period cups. I can't do it. I'm too scared. I am way too freaking scared. Thinking about suctioning a cup into my uterus sounds like the scariest thing in the entire world. Almost scarier than childbirth. I cannot believe how much this room has cooled down with my grow lights off. This is definitely the hottest room in the house and I can't even imagine what it's gonna feel like in the summer. This is gonna be my first summer with the plant room set up like this with as many lights as I have now. So, ow. I think I'll be doing most of my filming and plant chores and stuff at night because I can't imagine what this apartment is gonna feel like in the summer with all these grow lights. And yes, we do have AC, but I try to not use it because it blasts right onto my plant shelf and those plants, I'm telling you, they can't catch a break. Spring is like the only time that they have where it's like perfect for them because in the winter, I blast my heater and then in the summer, I blast my AC and they're just all kind of like, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this with moss now. Speaking of flying, it just reminded me, I have so many stories of just like nightmare flights because of how often I used to travel when Vince and I were still doing long distance. Oh my gosh, I think one of the first, I think one of, one of the worst ones was um, we were on this teeny tiny propeller plane. It was an Alaska flight going from Bellingham to Vancouver so it was a really short flight it was like 30 minutes in the air tops thank goodness but it's a tiny plane it's so small and this woman she was like she was sitting behind me and she kept freaking putting her feet and I oh no um she kept putting her feet through like the hole so like you know there's like the re like to your on your seat there's like the two like armrests or whatever she was putting her feet on the armrest through like the seat and i was like dude what the hell and she kept doing this thing where she would crack her toenails and i kept like i didn't want to touch her feet but i kept using my elbow to like shove it off but i think she felt like i was supposed to share my armrest that was in front of her for her foot so she kept moving it back but like just keeping it on the armrest and oh my gosh 
like I just don't like feet in general like I don't even like my own feet and so I was just repulsed because they did not smell good they smelled like sour like sour gym socks or something it was so bad and then she just kept crack how how can when I crack anything on my body my fingers my toes my back it cracks once I get one 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 shot and then there's no more cracks she could just crack 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 like every time she moved her toes they would crack I was like a little bit jealous but I was also really repulsed at the same time and I'm like what makes you think that it is okay for you to stick your nasty cracky foot on my armrest so finally, I was like, I just turned around and I was like, can you take your foot off? And she was like, oh, sorry. Like she didn't know what she was doing. I was like, girl, my elbow and your foot have touched like 16 times in the span of 20 minutes. You knew exactly what you were doing and you knew that I didn't want you touching my armrest. Like, I just feel like there's like common sense etiquette on flights that a lot of people just don't, it's like they just don't get it. I'm like, how? Like, how is this not common knowledge? I actually need one more strap. Obviously, this was pre-COVID, but there was another flight where this guy was coughing and he wouldn't cough into like his like arm or like into his shirt. He would just cough on me and I was like, okay, so do I have a sign on my forehead that says I'm a freaking Kleenex? Like, why are you coughing directly on me? And I straight up was just like, can you cough the other direction? And I don't think he spoke English because he just looked at me like I was insane. And I'm immunocompromised, so I just, I get sick really easily. So when I'm around germy people and stuff, I just, ugh, I will like instantly get in a bad mood if someone just does not have like, common sense in terms of like what is acceptable I would just never like openly cough on someone like I always like if I have to sneeze or cough I always do it like into my shirt or like into my sweater or something if I unsnap this top one I'm gonna scream I'm not joking going on flights is not my favorite thing in the world I just don't I don't know I get really grossed out Thinking about like breathing in the same air as all these people for that amount of time and like people's farts just being like cycled into the vents and then re being recirculated. I mean, I think that's how it works, right? Doesn't it just go through like a filtration system and then it goes back? I don't trust a filter to filter out a fart. Uh-uh. That's nasty. And I feel like because of my height, I just always am constantly walking in people's fart trails. Like, if you're in public and you have to fart, isn't it, like, just common decency to, like, make sure no one's around and not do it, like, while someone's walking directly behind you? I swear, it's like, sometimes the smell is just so strong, it's like you can taste it. Alright, so this moss pole is done. I was gonna chop off the bottom leaf because there's an extra note on here and I'm trying to propagate more majestic so that I have more majestic to add to my soderoy garden but I kind of just liked it as a whole plant so I kept it but yeah I think this one's gonna size up pretty quickly my other majestic is humongous I'll be doing a video showing that one um, in a couple weeks oh it burns I'm so tired but I have Two more to deal with. Honestly, I don't really need to do anything to the elbow epi. I'm really just gonna chop it up and um, just stick it into probably tree fern fiber or something. But I do need to pot up this patchy clotta and I think I have just enough pawn to pot it up. It feels really nice to be repotting right now because I had a really stressful day at work. I'm working on this big project for a client that had a tight deadline that I already missed because of just things going back and forth and then today I found out a massive problem with it that is going to set it back even further which I feel like it's like half my fault and half their fault but either way as the 
designer. I should have caught this a long time ago, so I do kind of feel like I dropped the ball and I feel like they're, they might like, I don't know, go with another designer for the future contracts, which I was really hoping to secure, but you know, it is what it is. I just feel like I haven't really been like super invested into anything since I started YouTube. Like I've really just put everything into this and um, I don't know. I don't really know where it's going, you guys. Like I'm not nearly making enough money to call this a career but I, I mean it is good side money it is helping pay the bills but i can't afford to just like drop everything and just youtube full-time i don't i don't actually think that i'll be able to like youtube full-time until i hit like at least like 50,000 subscribers or something which seems kind of impossible to me but i don't know it just seems highly unlikely that i'll ever get that many subscribers so Gotta keep my job, gotta keep my clients. <laughs> I'm gonna pot it into this thing. I think I have enough pawn for this, I hope. These roots are like so wiry, but like the new roots all grow in like that. They're just all like wiry and just like stiff and stuff. I don't know, they just don't feel juicy and delectable. <laughs> I actually like this plant so much more as a little bushy guy rather than it the way it was growing before. Hopefully it gets some more leaves though. I don't know why the other one just like died off for no reason. Okay, I guess I'll handle this. I did want to show you guys this massive chunk it was propagated from. Look at how fat that stem is compared to like the new stem. Like that, it's girthy like that's it it looks like a freaking monstera chunk okay so here's the deal i really really want to try and separate out this variegation right here this like white and green variegation i don't know if it's going to continue because for example we had that on this stem here where it was like three of these like white leaves and then it pushed out this one, this real looking leaf, and then that one, and then this one. So I don't know if it will be able to be isolated, but it, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. So I'm going to just chop it right here. I don't know if you can see anything. Oh gosh, it smells like alcohol. I think I'll just leave it like this and then get this one potted. I don't think that my mom needs any more epipremnum albo, so I think I'm just going to be giving away the rest of this. I don't think that it's worth selling really. I'm probably going to pot these two together. It would be kind of cool to get an, like an albo epi bush that had like a ton of white variegation. That might be really pretty. This one is just like normal, but it's cool because these ones have two like half moon leaves. Although I am not a huge fan of the half moon on the el elbow epi as you guys might know from the one that I've been trying to grow. It's like, it feels like an impossible task. So yeah, this one actually reverted. This one doesn't even have any variegation on the new leaf. Um, this one, I mean, this one has interesting leaves. I swear, they look very like Rio-esque. You might not think so, but I think it does. It's just I'm trying to be realistic in like how many propagations I'm taking. Like what am I actually going to like value later once it does start growing, you know? Because I think sometimes like I'm harmlessly just like taking props and like, oh, it's just going to go in this little bin and that little bin. And then before you know it, I have this entire like bin of propagations that need to be potted up. I'm pooped, you guys. I've done this three times now because I filmed the part one, which I scrapped all of it. And then I filmed part two directly after, and so here I am, third time in a week. YouTubing is like a vicious cycle. I don't know how anybody does it with kids. Like if you have people that you're responsible for, like keeping alive, like thank goodness I only have Pudge or I would not be here, seriously, there's no way. Okay, now it's like hard to see, so I'm gonna turn the light back on. Ah, uh, burns! 
This one is going to be a shorter uh, story time. The part two that's going out tomorrow is going to be an hour and a half long. So decisions, decisions. I don't think I'm going to keep this one. I might keep this one just because I kind of like how these leaves look. But I think I might try and grow it up a pole. How many elbow epi does one need? I feel like I should just give this away to somebody who doesn't have one and would appreciate it more than I. Is that a thrip? Yeah, I'm gonna give these away to somebody locally who doesn't have one that wants one. I just hate coordinating pickups because it's not like I can just like open my door and put it on my front step. Um, I just, I have to like put pants on, I have to go downstairs, the whole thing. And at the same time, I am very hesitant now to give away my address, so. Anyway, honestly, I think that's it. I'm, I'm gonna let this soak for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, and then I'm probably just gonna pop it into some tree fern fiber and call it a day. Yeah, I feel like we're wrapped up here. I got, got a good amount done. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I think the next one is slightly bit juicier but yeah i wanted to omit the one story that i felt was a really good story to tell but i think it's a good call to leave it off of youtube so if you liked it don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps pudgeonize visibility a lot on youtube we hit 9k this week which is so exciting we are a thousand away from 10k um and I don't know what that means for me or this channel, but it just feels kind of surreal to hit 10k in like a year and some change. Yeah, it feels good. I love talking with all of you guys. I would love to create like a little community of us and I don't know, this space has just become such a like a fun space for me. So thank you guys for being here. To everyone who's been here from the beginning or if you're brand new, I truly, truly appreciate you. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow to part two of this video, which will be a tipsy story time and repot. Uh, just a forewarning, I start off quite normal and by the end of the video, I'm just like hot mess express. My eyes are like down to my cheeks, my eyeliner's everywhere. Uh, yeah, no drinking for me for a while, but it was a good time. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I guess I'll see you tomorrow.